Let's do this. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1340, July 11th, 2024, uh, for the second day now. 106 degrees on this day in 1936. 49 degrees on this day in 1945. That's also the second day for uh, 1945. They hit a cool spell there, didn't they? Yes. At the, uh, at the end of World War II. Say the swimming season is fully upon us. The kids are bugging the hell out of you. Let them swim after they eat, too. That's a bunch of BS. You can swim after you eat. You're not going to get a cramp. So go down to that beach kept free of weeds and algae by the products of Aquaside, a White Bear Lake company that's been maintaining Great Lake Shores for more than 60 years with a complete line of lake and pond control products that take care of the weeds and the algae and all the other junk in there that you don't want. The products are easy to use, they work quickly, and they're registered with the EPA and the DNR. Uh, take your cell phone, walk down to the shoreline or out back to the pond and call Aquaside and tell them what you're looking at They'll help you identify it and get you the right products, and your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight, King! Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. What's your in problem? A, you in a street fight with your microphone? <laughs> right. He was trying to write something down, and his eraser kept hitting the microphone. I want to uh, start the show with a change-up. Uh, and you'll all be swinging mightily before the ball gets to the plate. Okay. I'm going to defend Nancy Pelosi. Wow. Huh? Wow. Huh? Can huh? it be done? Can it be done? Mm, no, it cannot be done. <laughs> I don't know. When you do this kind of stuff, you make me nervous. Oh, don't have a care. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> But she's got to be 120, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> so yesterday in the halls of Congress, she was uh, approached by Rachel Scott, who is an ABC News reporter, mm -hmm. who happens to be a black woman, very elegant, typical ABC reporter. And she began questioning Pelosi on whether Pelosi supports Biden's candidacy. Do, do you think he can... Do you think he can run? And this irritated, yeah. this irritated Nancy. I saw this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe you know where I'm going. Maybe. And she said a number of times that I'm not going to talk about this in these halls. I'm not. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not. Of course, there. She's never accountable to the public any more than any of the rest of these frauds. <laughs> but she said, "I'm not having discussions with you or anyone else about what I talked to the president about." With all due respect. Pelosi told Scott in a video that went viral. There's just the two of them walking down the halls of Congress as these reporters are always trying to get a word in with these reluctant people who supposedly represent you, but they won't talk. I'm not going to be making any comments today in the hallway about the fate of our nation, okay? Well, Scott, being Rachel Scott, continued. She's, she's there. She's got to get something. For her minders back at ABC, she's trying to get some footage, so content. she keeps. Yeah, she got to get content, so she keeps asking. Are you concerned whether or not he can win in November? Scott said. I think he can win in November. Pelosi said. However, Nancy lost her cool. And I don't think she did when Scott asked if she believed Biden should run for re-election. I'm not, she said, stopping in the hallway. Am I speaking English to you? I am not <laughs> going to be making any statements about any of that right now in the hallway. OK. And what happened with the viral part is it blew up is that that was thought to be uh, distasteful to say because Rachel it's Scott happens woman. to be a black woman. Mm -hmm. B as in B, S as in, have we reached the point where yes. we can't talk to each yes. other yes. with normal yes. bromides? Yes. Yes. yes, we have. That's just, yeah. that's just, hey, I've said it to everybody I've ever talked to at one point or another. Excuse me, look at me. Am I speaking English? We say that to everybody. Can't she say that to a black woman without it becoming a national incident? 
Well, no, it can't. Oh, baloney! Baloney! <laughs> Careful. I, I, I actually agree with you. But thank you. But it's but that is. You don't have to go at. any farther. Okay. Further. <laughs> further. Thank you. Further's in addition to farther. Is That's time. right. So you don't have to go any further. You know the best why use this... of that saying is in uh, Pulp Fiction, where Samuel L. Jackson says, "English mother, yes. do you speak it?" Yeah, That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all about milking the moment, milking the content, drawing it out, making it last, using it for a week or more. That's all this is. But there was there was no intent on Pelosi's part to uh, demonstrate some sort of racial insensitivity. No. That's, that phrase has nothing to do with white people or black people or red people or blue people or yellow people. It's just it's, it's it, yeah, it's been around forever. We've been using it on each other forever. So there, did I succeed? Yes, you yes. did. Eh. The same thing happened. What believe do you mean? it or not. Eh. Uh, the same thing happened in the NASCAR world a couple of weeks ago. Um, Kyle Larson Spotter said, said to Kyle, you allow this to happen to you. You know, it was an incident on the track. And Kyle said to him, F you. Yeah. And the whole world went crazy. Kyle and his spotter are at odds. They hate each other, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out that Kyle and his spotter are very, very good friends. And they talk to each other the way very, very good friends do. You know, it's the way we talk it's, to each a, other yeah. before the show. show prep. People people poke their head into the office and go, "Oh my God, are you? What's going? Are you guys going to kill each other?" No, but no. to think they talk to each other. To think there are these measly little rats that that pounce on these things yeah, and attempt to make something of them. Yeah. Uh, if I gave you three hundred grand, would you promise me you'd walk directly to the Stone Arch Bridge and just tear it up and throw it in the water? Just please do me that favor. Well, Just... I promise you I will. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'll make it. <laughs> the Minneapolis-based group called Somali Youth Link continues to patrol parts of the city to deter violence where youth tend to gather. Well, I know it's hasty on my part, but I would say, based on everything that's been happening lately, I would say they have miserably failed at deterring any violence. Uh, look at the 4th of July. It's not like all the Somali kids are bad, but there are some bad apples, and those bad voices are louder than others, said Bashir Elmi, a Somali elder who walked with the group Tuesday night. Apparently they weren't walking with the kids on the night of the 4th of July. Well, it turns out... Uh, uh, the group, originally contracted by the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District, a nonprofit working to keep the city clean and safe. They were originally contracted with that. After the 90-day pilot program last year, the city said the work was so successful, the Neighborhood Safety Department extended the services for one year, <laughs> contacting directly with Somali Youth Link for three hundred grand that runs through May of 2025. Why don't you just take that money and just take it to the bridge and throw it away because it's all going to be stolen, misused. Uh, I have no no problem saying that whatsoever. I, I have no doubts in my mind. I'm not even going to use the word allegedly. The group provides culturally specific support services and outreach, including housing, employment, mental health, and drug treatment. You want to bet? Yeah. Wait. You want to bet? Uh, we don't know that. They they uh, they patrol Boom Island, Dinky Town, Dinky Town. You missed a little event there the other night. Uh, Stone Arch Bridge. There, you can stand there while I throw the three hundred grand away. They do this five times a week. They patrol Boom Island, Dinky Town, and Stone Arch Bridge. You're failing then. You're not doing a very good job. How many uh, boxes of fireworks can you buy for 300 grand? Quite a bit. I bet it's a lot. You can put on a hell of a show. Uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, I, you know, good luck to them. It'd be nice to think the 300 grand would be well spent, but yeah. I can't imagine that it will be. It appears to be a part of a larger organization called Voice of East African Women, VEA, V-E-A-W, where they're trying to help uh, all of these youth stay 
clean and provide workshops and platforms for the youth to express what is happening in their environment and how they cope with daily issues. How about instead of cultural specific feedback, you encourage the kids to assimilate? Wouldn't that be wise? That'd be helpful. Is it? In my case, it didn't work, but is, is it good to give kids something to do, something else to do? Yes. What do you mean? Well, in my case, it was we've made a youth center here with a rolling rink, and we want all the use over here, and all the use instead went over to the bar slash bowling alley instead. It was a complete and total failure. I'm I'm uh, I'm afraid maybe I'm disqualified from even commenting because well, I'm about- old enough to have been of a generation where we didn't need anything to do provided for us. What about softball, baseball, golf? Um, you know what? The Reverend Christopher does this a lot. Um, fishing, hunting, yep. um, shotgun sports, you know, um, shooting clay targets or rifles, target shooting, giving them an, uh, something else to do. Well, and that's actually fun and not stupid. And I know sports isn't for every kid, Kenny, but I honestly do believe it's the best babysitter. And it, it for two reasons. Number one, it teaches you to be a part of a structured team slash organization. But number two, it wears kids out, man. You know, I can't tell you how many times my boys are just wiped. And it's well, here, fantastic. Here's what you do, GLers, especially if you live in the belly of the beast in uh, the heart of Liberal Lakes, Minneapolis. Write this date down. This is July 11th, 2024. Or better yet, write down the 4th of July next summer and just see maybe if this 300 grand uh, played out over the year as a calming influence and next year you don't have disruptions on the 4th of July. If we were given that money and tasked with the um, duty to find something for these kids to do, what would we do? Uh, Get a bus, roll into uh, roll into a Riverside every day, pick up 30, 40 kids, take them to do what? Uh, Different events every day. Go down the Apple River, go camping, learn to shoot a shotgun, maybe not gun sports. That probably wouldn't work for inner city kids. I don't know. I You'd have to ask either. the Reverend Tim. We should talk to him about that. And is what he is doing better than what these people are doing? Because you have to distract these kids somehow. You have to do something. Yep, exactly. Do you recall it was only within the last two weeks we speculated that the untold millions of dollars that will be devoted to a Somali autism programs uh, might be held in suspicion right. given the nature of the fraud that the Walls administration continues to preside over. Well, yesterday in the Star Tribune, we learned this. Investigators are examining potential Medicaid fraud among Minnesota autism services, and state lawmakers say they will consider licensing the providers whose numbers have increased dramatically. The Minnesota Department of Human Services has 15 active investigations into organizations or individuals providing autism services and has closed 10 other cases. The investigations were first reported by the reformer, which wrote last month that the FBI is looking into fraud by autism service providers. Now, is our governor... On top of this? Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yes. well, unfortunately, you might be wrong. Governor Tim Wall <laughs> said yesterday that he's not aware of an FBI investigation. <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes feel that none of this can be happening. None of this is real. How can this? I'm not aware of this, fraud, uh, said uh, Walls, but he's, he's concerned about the allegations of fraud. <laughs> But he's unaware of an FBI investigation. And then he says, uh, these services are life-changing for people with autism, especially children. That's why it's so important to make sure every dollar spent on services is accounted for. Is he a sociopath? 
Do you think? What? The state created a medical benefit about a decade ago for young people with autism spectrum uh, disorder and related conditions. The number of people receiving the early intensive developmental and behavioral intervention benefit and the providers getting paid has climbed sharply in recent years, as have the dollars flowing to those providers. The providers offer therapy and services. The benefit program is intended to educate and support families of people with autism and help individuals be more independent. Okay, uh, great, that's important. There are 328 providers in the state. That's up from 41 <laughs> providers. Oh, wait, as recently oh, as when? That is 2018. A oh. It's almost like these. Is this uh, real? It's, it's almost as if someone said, hey, we got a good gig going here. Wait, tell me that number again. Up, it was there are 328 what? related providers in the state last year. That's up from 41 in 2018. And this is according to the Department of Human Services. So 82 would be 100%, right? Yeah, but I haven't gotten to the fun part yet, Kenny. That's John, an increase Chris. of, well, that's a lot. Of, that's a, well, that's here a, you go. That's a, it can't be right, Chris. The amount the providers were paid also has bumped up a little during that time. From <laughs> $6 million to $192 million. And Walls is unaware that the FBI is looking into it. Oh, I'm sure he's just he's so unaware. busy. Unaware. He's just busy. He's feeding kids right now, Joe. He's busy. The state has withheld payments to seven autism service provider organizations since 2018. According to DHS, five of those were withheld for credible fraud allegations. DHS said another payment was denied because the provider failed to follow DHS access to records, and one was held withheld to protect the public welfare and in the best interests of Minnesota health care programs. So since 2018, DHS here pretending to be vigilant, tell us that they've withheld payments to seven providers as the number of providers has increased to 328. So that means they're down to 321 that they're still paying, if mm -hmm. I'm doing the math right, which is still an increase from the 41 we had six years ago. What What's your source here? I, I, are we on the same source? Are you on Reformer? No, this, is, Reformer? this is a Star Tribune piece. Okay, I've got, a, I've got something here from the Reformer. Yeah, what Only, you got? Only the DHS Office of Inspector General goes out to the autism centers to investigate fraud. Only one person. You know what that means, Joe? We need to throw more money at this so we can have more investigators. <laughs> That's what I read that as saying. There's a need for service and the demand for service is high. But the question is, do we need to put guardrails? Said House Human Services Finance Chairman Mohamed Noor. DFL Minneapolis. He said they are looking into that for both autism centers and telehealth centers, whatever the hell that is, to ensure there is proper care for the most vulnerable children in our state. The state should be licensing autism centers and in-home providers who offer the same services in different settings, said Representative Kim Hicks, DFL Rochester, who had previously worked with an autism policy at the Department of Human Services. This is truly amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that the worst governor in the history of the state continues to be the worst governor in the history of the state. I've got your math, Chris. Okay. 41 to 320, that's a rise of 700%. It's not bad. From 6 million Kenny. to 192 million, that's a rise of 3 thousand percent <laughs> <laughs> and look how that'll be spun joe that'll be spun as look at the jobs we're creating and who's going to suffer because of this the the actual kids that have that, that autism need yeah. that need help the number of providers well more accurately the, the amount of money being spent 
is rising faster, fortunately, because I don't want kids to suffer. But the the money being spent is rising faster than the number of children who have autism. It's like that <sighs> dam on the south side of Mankato a Rapid couple dam, of weeks dam. ago. Yeah. It's just <laughs> blasting through. <laughs> One in 34 children in Minnesota was identified as being on the autism spectrum. I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful in any sense of the, ima- of, of the imagination, but the spectrum is pretty broad, isn't it? I mean, you what could you get me for being on the spectrum, probably. I mean, what, uh, what well, the hell is the spectrum? Well, we've known that for years. But, uh, I mean, but there's no question, Joe, that the kids, even the kids on the spectrum need help, as do their parents. This isn't any easy task. But here's my problem, Kenny. I don't trust Walls or his minions. Yeah, I don't blame you, nor should you. Um, The concerns about autism providers misusing federal dollars come as another state agency, the Minnesota Department of Education, has been in the spotlight for failing to safeguard against fraud in the Feeding Our Future case. Well, really? You, you, You think that might come into play, that we have a little... DHS said it has systems to identify fraud, waste, and abuse, mm. and act swiftly when they are mm. suspected. Uh, we no. don't. No, I don't believe no. you. For- so, who are who are you blaming? Are you blaming DHS or the Smallies? I'm blaming uh, both. Yeah, mostly DHS, though. You, you got to get in front of this, you clowns, because this, this is going to happen with everything. I think Somali fraudsters are some of the most clever, boldest people in our midst. Very creative. And to, to, you, they want to go and get $10 million, they're going to take it in front of you, and you won't even know it hits you. You know, I've got an evil streak a mile wide. I should hook up with them. You should become Somali. I identify. Should. Yeah, you identify as You Somali. know what? I'm going to identify as a Somali and become an autism provider and put in my uh, request for $750 million. We now have 342 providers. Yeah. 3,000% rise in cost. Three thousand percent. I hope you. Uh, I don't want to make your head explode right now, but can we carry this through to the next segment? Because I have a piece of audio that I would like to spring on you from your favorite governor, Mr. Tim Walz. I would love to hear that, Chris. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. The summer can take a toll on your garage door. Don't I know that? It's been backed into a couple of times because your timing was <laughs> off. Plus, it goes up and down more often in the summer. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, it says that right here, my precision copy. With all that opening and closing from going out and enjoying the Minnesota weather. Well, if you have any doubts, you get a hold of precision garage doors because they're the best. And uh, if you need a new door, schedule a free on-site new door estimate with one of precision doors designers. They've got models for every budget. They're really cool because, you know, we're not talking the old garage door. We're talking the modern door that can increase the value of your home. It can save energy because of insulation. It can provide better security. It's sturdy. It's insulated. They can be, it can be integrated with home security. Get out and enjoy the summer and don't get stuck inside with a broken garage door. That would be heartbreaking because this is garage door opening season. Usually the door is open. You're right, rookie. Yeah, it is garage door season. opening season. It's the season. Plus, they fix everything else. So I, I want you to put their number in your contacts. Precision Door, serving western Wisconsin in the metro. Don't charge more for weekend visits. Call Precision at 612-263-6985. And uh, if you want to uh, book online, it's precisiondoormn.com. If you want to have some fun and win some money while watching your favorite teams, you need to join over 5 million players who have won over $2 billion at Underdog Fantasy. Just go to underdogfantasy.com or download their easy-to-use app. Use the promo code GARAGELOGIC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. You can use locals to win some money like I did with the Vikings' Aaron Jones or a team favorite like Josh Jacobs. You could win up to 1,000 times your money by choosing higher or lower on player stats like 
touchdowns, home runs, three-pointers, and lots more. You pick who's hot and who's not and turn your sports opinion into real money. Download the app today. Use the code GarageLogic to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Every player, every yard they pick up, just select higher or lower on underdog. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP and 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE. NY or text hope NY at four six seven three six nine. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts and he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48 minute, no obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell him you heard about him here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. <laughs> It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Joe, you remember such hits as the food fraud. I certainly do, Chris. You remember the good hit of Medicaid fraud. Oh, yeah. How about child care fraud? Sure. Coming soon will be homeless fraud. I think so. Well, the, uh, I almost said the mayor, the governor of the great state of Minnesota, sorry, the governor of what was once the great state of Minnesota, announced yesterday... A brand new program. Really? Yes, he did, Joe. He spoke in front of a uh, in front of a group. I'm going to read the headline first, and then I will play the minute long clip. Are you ready? Yeah. Disparities in our child welfare system have persisted for too long. I think so. I was proud to sign the African American Family Preservation Act into law, preventing further harm. Prioritizing the well being of our children today will pay off for generations to come. All of these things start to layer on, um, whether it be child tax credits, whether it be help in child care, whether it be some of these opportunities and many of these things very bipartisan to strengthen families, strengthen those early years for children, strengthen and give powers back to the communities that know best, we make a difference. So I'm just going to congratulate. This is truly how legislation should be built. This came from the community. It came from legislative leaders. It came with support across uh, a spectrum of folks to get to the point where we put this into law, all with the goal of something very simple, strengthening families and making children are cared for in the best way. That's that's a beautiful um, what what how much money is this not sure yet i'm not sure yet. but i noticed a theme have you guys noticed a theme with all of these frauds because when joe was doing the last segment a theme occurred to me mm-hmm. whether it's and i'm not accusing this one yet but it but it it fits the bill of what i was going down the road i was going down they all have a similar theme and that is vulnerable it's either children or the elderly and so if you oppose something like this, you're an evil bastard because you hate kids. Of course. That's the theme with all of these fraud cases. Or the, or in another one, the homelessness. Well, you're just an what evil white guy. What I can't get guy. past is even when they've, the fraud has been discovered, the governor wants to double down and spend more money on issues and, and things that, that, that have already been proven fraudulent. And then... Go on and boast about it on The Morning Joe. May I state, (laughs) may I state for the record that, uh, for example, uh, he intends to okay, he won't have anything to do with it, he intends to okay the spending of $100 $100 million of federal money, which is your money, on homelessness, all right? That would be fine with me if there was a means in place to... Track it for success. End of story. Right. But what happens is this money goes out to 
the community. I got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't care if you're doing a speech. It's, it's, it's not followed. It's not measured. It's not graphed. It's not analyzed. It's not studied. No one is held accountable. Do you realize, and I know we're one of the few outlets that keeps uh, hectoring the public about this, but $250 million food fraud, and we have a governor who has yet to hold not only himself not accountable, but no one has been accountable. No one. No. And then they get a new MEA commissioner... Willie Jett, who purposefully said, I'm not here to hold anyone accountable. Mm -hmm. Why are you there? What is your job? I think if you if you got a hundred million and you can cleverly figure out ways to mitigate homelessness, I'm all in favor of spending the hundred million. I really am. Because it's a sad situation to see somebody sleeping outside. Or as the British call it, sleeping rough. (laughs) <laughs> sleeping rough. Never heard that. But you have no means to tell me any of that. That $100 million is going to disappear. Uh, the uh, How much did I say they were giving to the Somali? The three hundred grand you are going to give to this so-called Somali patrol. You're not going to measure it. You have no means to. So that's going to disappear. You're spending $192 million on providers for autism services. Are you accomplishing anything in the mitigation of autism or keeping autism at bay or helping the kids who are truly suffering from it? No, you're not. You have no accountability whatsoever. There is no means to measure your success. And if you listen to the clip again, and I don't want to, nor do I want to subject the listeners to it, the first 30 seconds of what Walls is talking about with the African American Family Preservation Act, you know, talking about the development. He's basically describing parenthood, isn't he? Sure. I don't even know what the hell he's talking I'm unaware of this act. This just well, signed into law, Joe. Recent development. Yeah, this is yesterday. I see. It was a big deal. Yeah. The only people that do any accounting uh, are the FBI after the fact. And, and then most, he's unaware and, of yeah, that. And most people are unaware of it. <laughs> yeah. Instead of, well. Hey. I, I I would say it's a change of subject, but it falls under the rubric of me not really believing what's happening. As I look around, uh, uh, I can't believe what's happening. Instead of issuing tickets for broken taillights and headlights, police in Minnesota are now giving out vouchers to fix them for free. The law enforcement agencies, well, not everyone, but 130 law enforcement agencies in Minnesota are part of the Lights On program managed by nonprofit micro grants. I, I don't know what they are. Creates a partnership between police and participating auto repair shops to cover the cost of repairs up to $250. There have been more than 10,200 vouchers issued to date since the program launched in 2017. This was compelled by the Philando Castile stop because, remember, he ostensibly was stopped for a broken taillight. It diffuses the police encounter, said CEO John Harrington, who was once a police chief and the commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. It provides an opportunity for building a relationship between the police and the community. I guess... My train has so long ago left the station that it's pointless for me to to point out that a broken taillight is is the responsibility of the auto owner. It's not the taxpayer's responsibility or the police's responsibility. Now, if you want to make the argument that maybe in many cases you're wasting a lot of time stopping somebody from a broken taillight, okay, I'll play along for a while. But I, I don't think it should come to the fact that we're to to remedy this, we pay for you to get a new taillight. Yeah. I think you're missing an important fact. And I'm you probably, just yeah. said it yourself. It, it innocently said it uh, yourself, except for the city of Minneapolis. This doesn't prevent law enforcement agencies from pulling these people over. No, it's it's when they prevents, do, they give them the voucher. But what happens when they come up to the window 
and they can tell that the person has been drinking. Well, then they get and, and arrested. And does this, does this prevent them from running their driver's license? I can't find that in any of the stories. In Minneapolis, from a story I'm reading from 2023, Minneapolis, according to what I'm reading, can't even pull you over. Now, that's something I vehemently disagree with. We've got to get drunk people off the roads. And if that's the excuse you're using, I'm all for it. Now, there's also a law in Minneapolis, or excuse me, in Minnesota, that if the officer smells weed, that officer can no longer search the car. Oh, weed's legal. <laughs> but can that officer give you a sobriety test? That's another question I haven't been able to answer. But I think it's very a very important distinction, Joe. I don't care whether or not the guy gets a ticket or not, or a voucher. That's fine with me. I think you need to reserve the right to pull these people over and have a little chat. The legislature this year approved $1.2 million for this. So we can buy $1.2 million worth of taillights. How can we turn? And I guarantee you this legislature would also be in favor of not even pulling you over if they could get away with it. Coming they would soon. prefer to let criminals just go free. What are you holding back, Reavers? Coming soon to the great state of Minnesota, taillight fraud. <laughs> well, you're not oh, wrong. There it's goes ridiculous, my taillight. Where's my wrong. money? <laughs> What oh, about oil change? Could I get a voucher? It usually oh, costs me that about would be 80 bucks. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it myself. The right. Minnesota legislature <laughs> isn't the only crazy one. Uh, and again, this falls under the heading of I, I can't believe today what I've been reading, and I can't believe Walls' national profile is blossoming while this state flounders. Uh, New York legislature is going to ban the small shampoo bottles you get at the hotel. Oh, no. Well, because that's going to contribute to saving the world from waste. <laughs> Any hotel with... Uh, you think You're, I'm making no, this, this up? No, this is the Babylon Bee. No. <laughs> no, no. Any hotel with 50 rooms will not be able to provide... To provide toiletry bottles under 12 ounces, according to the Department of Environmental Conservation. The act, which was introduced in 2019, defines hospitality personal care product as a byproduct provided by a hotel and intended to be applied or used on the human. Just a minute. You know, just a minute. On the human body, as opposed to what? What else would you use that stuff for? Your dog, and 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 part thereof for cleansing. The legislation defines small plastic bottle as a plastic container with less than a twelve ounce capacity, that is intended to be uh, non reusable by the user. The law says that hotels that break the restriction will receive a warning within thirty days to correct the violation. Okay, I, I have a number of or, questions. Or what? If the hotels fail to do so, they will be liable to the state for a civil penalty of $250. Well, <laughs> who's going to police this? <laughs> well, um, speaking of that, when was the last time you were in a hotel that gave you little shampoo bottles? They're right there mounted on the wall of the shower and you need to crawl in the shower ahead of time with your glasses on to see which one is conditioner and body wash. You're reading my Solvay. mind. I can see Solvay. Hold on. Oh, you're Reavers, reading my I've mind. To get out. I get in the. I get in there. Walk around. I'm just ready to turn on the shower, and I read this agate oh type on these. God. What yeah. is that? What is that? Then I got to get out, go yeah. get my cheaters, yes. and come yes. back so I can set the no. little teeny bottle of shampoo in an area where I know that shampoo. Shampoo. And then he comes out and he's like, damn it, I put body lotion in my no, hair again. Because no, I've I'm... washed my hair with body lotion and it doesn't work. <laughs> Joe, I'm talking about the ones that are mounted on the shower yeah. wall with the pump Oh, out of that, you go into old-fashioned places. No, 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 no this, this is brand new. This is brand new. I, 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 I don't trust trend. that. I don't like that. I don't know what's in there. I don't like that. <laughs> so the point is you have to shower with your glasses on. The point is, you're right. you got to bring your cheaters into the can because yeah. you got to read all these labels. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can I uh, can I go back to the uh, taillight thing for a minute? You yeah. may. Uh, may I? I'm sorry. Yes, may I? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I have no problem with the program. I think it's a good program, and, and cops do too. I'm reading a bunch of old stories here, and all the cops love it. And uh, over 150 uh, sheriff's departments and police departments in Minnesota say it's been great for their – for their. Uh, but what I don't get is the $1.3 million that we just uh, are going to give away because – the program for five years has been funded by donations and has worked just fine. So why did the state oh. decide they had to jump in and, oh. and send uh, the Viking? I'm reading old stories. Uh, the Joyce Foundation, whatever that is, the Minnesota Vikings, various companies contributed money oh. to all of this. But now the state has to throw in one I point, whatever that. it is, three. Uh, John, uh, th- that's the $64,000 question. Did they, they just elbow these companies out that were giving, you know, help to this program? Say, hey, you know what? We got this. Forget about it. We'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. How much money are we throwing into that dump where the governor is supposed to be living on Summit Avenue? It's about 10, 15? 10, 16 million, something, something like that. Is this that, the equivalent of him not getting his damage deposit back and we're on the hook for it? Yeah, and then and then he moved to the... To, uh, White Cliff, or whatever the hell that house is called for the University of Minnesota, Clifton Manor, or East right Cliff, on, East Cliff. On, uh, I think it's Lake East Street. Cliff. Or you don't call it Lake Street. It's uh, the guy must Marshall. live like uh, Belushi in Animal House, <laughs> because now they want ten million to cover uh, cleaning that dump up. <laughs> well, but so far so good because they want to do it with volunteer money. Oh, I didn't read that part. So that's great if you're going to do it. But, man, you got to watch where this guy lives because he must leave wet towels on wooden floors or something. I mean, <laughs> come on. What's he doing? So they want to put $10 million into a house that's worth $2.5. Uh, I don't want to get stuck for that. And if the uh, if the volunteers don't come through, uh, the taxpayers should be alert that they'll come to you for it. No, it's your house, you of him, sell the damn thing. Yeah. The president's uh, the president of the U makes a lot of money. She can afford an apartment. Get one of the apartments that failed Academy loves to preach about for sustainable living in an urban core. Get it to hang right over Lake Street. Or downtown where the Somalis can shoot you with fireworks. Yeah, no, no, I'd no, rather no. see we have that taken on. care of now. Well, that's right, there's patrols. Yeah. I'd rather see her on the West Bank Cedar Riverside, that high rise. Yeah. That'd be fun. I, 10 I'd even point, give her 10.5 for the house. Put her in the that, penthouse, Joe. Because you know that elevator breaks down every other day. <laughs> 10.5 for a $2.6 million property. And that's what if they could get 2.6 for it. Isn't that something? The task force, uh, the regions created a task force, I guess. Anticipates the U Foundation will need 4.5 million endowment to cover 200 grand in operating expenses each year and 6 million to recover to re, to cover repairs, security, and other updates needed. The U will contri- need to contribute about 100 grand a year. You know what we need? We need a contractor. We've got to get a contractor on the phone. If I was a real estate investor. <sighs> And I knew that that house was worth 2.5, but it's going to take 10 to refurbish it. You know what I'd be thinking? Tear the dump down and put up a new house. Which could, could be done for new... less than $12 million. Yeah, that's my question. Could we build a house on that lot for less than 10, 12 mil? 200 yards from there. 200 yards from there. Two new beautiful houses have just been built. I yeah. guarantee you they didn't cost what they want to re. Yeah, and they were teardowns, down. right? No, they, it was, they, there was vac- There was something oh. there. I just can't remember what it was, but it's gone. And there's lots there now. But that whole stretch of road from Lake Street. I don't down know to- what insanity uh, uh, compelled those people to live in St. Paul, but they did. <laughs> well, think about the last ten years, Joe. That um, you call it what West River Parkway between Lake Street and Ford. Yeah. How many teardowns and rebuilds have been there? At least I'm um, going to say a dozen. I don't go over there. That's Minneapolis. Oh, I don't go over there. No, on the St. Paul side. Oh, St. Paul side has seen 
uh, actually, both sides of the river have seen many. Yeah. Beautiful places. It was constantly happening when I was driving that road. And then their street, their access street, the River Boulevard, is closed every third day because we're saving some new illness. I would be so angry if I paid taxes there and every other weekend my road is closed. And you don't have an alley there either. Oh, there's alleys. Oh, are there? Yeah, there's beautiful alleys. <laughs> beautiful. I like a good alley. Drive through. Where was I? Oh, the shampoo bottles. Yeah, well, that'll help the world. Yep. It'll save New York it's for It's going to sure. save the world <laughs> from a great deal of waste. Mm -hmm. uh, just remember, you got to bring your cheaters into the biffy because you can't read those damn bottles. <laughs> you had to shower with your glasses right. on. <laughs> you see, if you need new windows or entry doors, Renewal by Anderson has you covered and you can save some money. It's a Renewal by Anderson mega flash sale. Buy one, get 50% off one when you buy four or more windows or patio doors. Plus, no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for 12 months. And this offer is good on renewals that claim window replacements. They feature Anderson Engineering and, and innovation in every component. If you need new doors, the anniversary sale pricing is good on the new Ensemble entry doors. That's exclusively by Renewal by Anderson. And those doors seal tight. You never know when you're going to get the next 20-minute flood. We had one yesterday in St. Paul at about 4 o'clock. Another inch of rain in a short time. So you want uh, you want windows and doors that shut. So learn more at RenewalByAnderson.com backslash garage logic or call Renewal by Anderson at 651-705-6931. Mike Schoonover, the mender of bent fenders, is on the phone because happy fun time. We're all smiles. Positive Thursday is brought to us by Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care right there in Shoreview, 1060 County E. Pretty much anything you need related to auto care can be had right there at Schoonover's. Good afternoon, Mike. Hey, Kenny. How are you? I'm looking at one, two, three, four... Um, potential customers for Schoonover uh, Auto Works and Body Shop right now, big crash down in Egan. Uh, how is business anyway? I, I, I got to believe it's picking up because of all the crashes I've been seeing as of late. Yeah, we had a, you know, we did not have a winter that uh, we're normally accustomed to. And, and the spring was a little bit slower than we're normally accustomed to. So uh, and that CDK outage uh, a couple of weeks ago really hammered us as well. So um, June is gone and July is here and business is much better. And I'm I'm very confident that uh, things are, are shaping up like they should be. So how about the detailing uh, part of the business? <sighs> well, I got a I got a call from a, a friend who said that they build a laundry detergent bottle in the trunk of their car and how can we clean it out <laughs> uh just hose you get out the hose right what do you, what, what do, you do i don't well <laughs> that's a good question how do you clean yeah. that out <laughs> well i think a lot of water is going to be needed a lot of um cold water because you don't want to use soft water on that because soft water will just create more suds so uh so you got to use hard water on it and and just um, keep on rinsing. One of the you rinse last it out, or you're going to build up all kinds of stains and dirt and stuff. So, yeah, you guys must go through wet dry vacs like crazy over there. I'm usually good for one a year at my place. <laughs> well, you know what? We buy some good ones. We've bought some cheap ones in the past, but the good ones that you spend thousands of dollars on last a long time as <laughs> long as you clean them you know you gotta you got it when you fill up a vacuum you do have to empty it <laughs> and, okay okay and, uh, all right that's, all right that's enough. not the uh that's not the fun job of uh <laughs> nobody likes to do that job it's easier to just lay down another 80 to 100 bucks and buy another one mike and i was very go, shocked a, a couple of weeks ago we were talking you said there's a big difference between detailing and what you do when a job is done, which you just call simply cleaning up a little bit. Uh, yeah. Your your definition of cleaning up a little bit is about the same as if I were going to detail my vehicle. 
That's all right, Kenny. That's what we do. So yeah, we're it's it's uh, it's good. But you know, summertime is God. You know, the weather is nice, and and you want your cars to look good. You want the yeah. tires dressed. You yeah. want that those wheels shined and the paint looking good and all the bugs off. And it's just a great time of year to 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 be a car enthusiast because you can just there's nothing better than getting your car cleaned up, rolling down the windows, turning up the music, and just cruising. And then rolling past a building that has glass that you can see your reflection in. That, with me, is a point of pride. I really love doing that. Absolutely. Garage Absolutely. Hey, Kenny, can I, can, I, can I cover one thing real quick? Quick. Hurry you up, know, Mike. Ev- Get it over with. Everybody was concerned about Hurricane Burl. Yeah, yeah. Well, well my mom's name is Burl, so um, I lived that hurricane. So... <laughs> So and Joe's had, right. It's not barrel. It is burl. So the final word has been spoken on the hurricane. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> Garage Logic's official body shop. You guys have been at it since 1938. No wonder you're always rated as one of the top shops in the metro. We're talking schoonoverbodyworks.com. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Got wow, two clients sorry, left, and I don't want you dicking around with either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Two, Here's huh? a man who spends hours in hardware stores, three. sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Sushu. Here's John Height. Thank you, Joe. This update is brought to you by North American Banking Company. Minneapolis city leaders are expected to give an update later today, Thursday, for their plan to deal with streetlight outages. Those outages, of course, because of... <sighs> Copper wire theft. It's been an ongoing problem, and now Minneapolis is among the many working to find a solution. Counselors want to hear from the public about a plan in the works that would replace street wiring in certain areas and make upgrades like concrete foundations and LED fixtures. The 2024 street lighting replacement plan would cost about $1.8 million. Uh, Brian Dodds is the city engineer from the Public, work, uh, public Works Department. He said last year, nine and a half miles of copper was stolen in Minneapolis. St. Paul has had the same issue. There, city crews have been trying different strategies to fix the problem, like putting metal bands around the poles and installing silent alarms to alert police. At the state capitol earlier this year, lawmakers passed a bill that would require anyone selling copper metal to have a state-issued license. Uh, that meeting happens uh, as we tape this at about in about an hour at about 1.30 or so. I got can we go, can oh. we go back to the uh, okay. nine and a half miles, you say? Nine and a half miles, yes. It's, we don't know that. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell uh, you. Nine uh, and a half don't miles. know that. You get a six inches of copper maybe on a light. Are you kidding me? Where do they come up with nine and a half miles? It doesn't seem plausible to me. A lot of street lights. Well, it all adds up. Every little bit counts. Yeah. Have you ever had to live paycheck to paycheck? Every single penny counts. Yes, I have. <laughs> Here's the deal, and it's going to cost you way less than whatever stupid proposals you have. You use the same system that we use on our fancy rims. You buy a set of aftermarket rims, Joe. They've got a special bolt pattern, and you need a a key that I keep it in my glove box at all time. It fits inside. It's like, have you ever had a hex head bolt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like that, only it's a fancy design, and only your key fits it. And then on the outside of your key, it's just a regular bolt that you, you know, put like a 7 8 wrench on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just do that? So, because so that the would city be too workers, cheap. The city workers would have a key or the electrician or whoever, and that way the fraudsters can't break into these things. They'd need a torch to get into them. Mm-hmm. Chris, you look dumbfounded. No, no, I, I love the idea. But I'm just wondering how soon until the, the, the thieves get their own tool. If GLers ran the state yeah. of Minnesota, can you imagine how much money everybody would have? Oh. There's so many GL workarounds. You're right. That's all it takes. Anything that needs figuring out? Just really, the amount of money out. put back in the people yeah. who earned it would be extraordinary. You, you're saying we wouldn't blast through an $18 trillion billion yeah. dollar there, surplus? No, we wouldn't have one because we wouldn't be taking the money in the first place. Good point. Go ahead, Johnny. In the garage, in the garage, Kenny. Thank Minnesota you, Kenny. now, <laughs> Minnesota now has its first reported case of 
dengue fever. Major? Oh, no. Fever. Major? Not sure if it's major or minor. Ooh. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the case was reported in Hennepin County. Historic data from the CDC from 2010 to 2023 shows only 180 cases of dengue have been reported in Minnesota during the past 13 years. No word on the condition of the lone patient or where the illness was contracted. I think that According would be helpful. It would be, yes. According to the CDC, dengue fever is typically spread through mosquito bites, and up to 400 million people are infected each year. However, the risk of widespread transmission in the continental U.S. is low. Your symptoms, they'd include aches and pains, mostly behind the eyes, in muscles, joints, and or bone pain, nausea, vomiting, and a rash. Those symptoms typically last two to seven days. Most patients recover about a week later. Treatment, according to the CDC, is general care, resting as much as you can, taking pain relievers when needed, and staying hydrated. So far, CDC officials say 2,500 cases, roughly, of dengue fever have been reported in the U.S. in 2024. Well, I thought it was more dreadful than that. I, I thought you died from it. I think without treatment, you can, right? Mm. I, 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 well, you, that doesn't sound like treatment. That sounds like just stay at home and put your feet up. It puts you at risk of developing something far worse. Well, let's not get it then. That's a good point. The uh, Ruby Slippers case continues, uh, and this time it's taken a bit of an ugly turn. Uh, the Crystal Police have requested additional charges against that man involved in the theft of the pair of Ruby Slippers worn by Judy Garland in the, the film. The old mobster? The Wizard of Oz, yes. On Monday, the Crystal Police Department filed a request with the Hennepin County Attorney's Office for formal charges to be filed for organized retail theft, conspiracy to commit theft, receiving stolen property, and two counts, these are new now, of domestic assault and harassment against 76-year-old Jerry Salterman. In May of 2023, Crystal Police were contacted by the FBI regarding evidence of an organized retail theft operation. The FBI was alerted to the evidence through its investigation into the Ruby Red Slippers case, which were stolen in 2005. Uh, Salterman was indicted in U.S. federal court with theft and witness tampering related to the theft of the slippers. Uh, officials found all kinds of things, including about $400,000 of stolen artwork and other merchandise over the course of 18 years from businesses throughout the metro area. They found tools, items consistent with a retail crime ring, and ledgers documenting the sale of a large number of the items on eBay by Salterman. Investigators, though, now say they determined that Salterman was involved in a long-term pattern of domestic assault and harassment against his wife, for many years to make sure she didn't tell police about the organized crime ring he was involved in, hence the new charges. His domestic assault included physical assaults and threats of physical and emotional harm. I would just make about 100 pair of those things for about two bucks each and keep them in a bad <laughs> supply room and just keep replacing them if they get taken. No one would know the difference. Those aren't rubies, people. They were sequins. <laughs> Valley Fair announces its Excalibur and Renegade roller coasters have reopened after flooding forced them to close. The park closed Excalibur, Renegade, and Thunder Canyon in late June, along with some parking lots. If you saw the video, uh, parts of the ride, well, they were they were under a bit of water. Well, Valley Fair said the rides did undergo rigorous safety inspections before they were cleared to reopen. Sure, they did. <laughs> Thunder Canyon in the uh, Valley Fair area is still closed. The parking lots reopened on July Joe, 3rd. you should volunteer to take the first ride after she's What's reopened. What's Thunder Canyon? That's the water ride. You sit in a little barrel oh, with, with five of your best finger, friends. You'll find out. Whoa. <laughs> Thunder Canyon. It's okay now. <laughs> Star Tribune reports. I used to uh, date her in high school. I knew a Thunder Canyon. <laughs> Star Tribune reporting My Pillow is facing possible eviction at its outlet store, warehouse, and primary manufacturing plant in Shakopee just months after the Minnesota company was forced out of a different warehouse for failing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in rent. An eviction notice filed in Scott County says the company didn't pay rent for the months of June and July on the property in Shakopee. Uh, MyPillow owes its Pennsylvania-based landlord almost $450,000, according to the court filing. In March, the company ordered by a Scott County judge to vacate another Shakopee warehouse at 4701 Valley Boulevard South after the landlord there said the company owed two hundred grand in rent. 
Mike Lindell, the company's CEO, told the Star Tribune yesterday that MyPillow recently settled up the payment issue and said they won't be kicked out on the streets, telling them there's some confusion apparently because one group bought it from another group and we don't have the same landlord. I was waiting on who we would pay, not if we were going to pay. Of course we're going to pay. An attorney for the property's landlord did not return a request for comment from the Star Tribune. The case remains open. Are people still buying those pillows? I hear ads for him on other stations. I, I don't know. Think maybe. how good Mike would be doing if he just stayed out of just politics. Just your mouth shut. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like everybody's Twitter account. The, you know, all these accounts that used to be fun, and then all of a sudden they're just yeah. nonstop mm-hmm. politics. Well, we said it at the... Sh- sorry, Ken. Shut up. We, shut up. We said it at the time. He's committing career suicide. Yeah. Just he, shut up. Well, do you see any link there, uh, by the way? I don't, but... Uh, uh, most of you know, the people who get involved with Trump end up in trouble. Huh. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. Hmm. Well, but his <laughs> biggest downfall wasn't the fact that he aligned himself with Trump. It's the fact that he did the election denying with the Bible stuff. That was cr- strictly as a result of getting aligned with Trump. Uh, correct. Well, no, there's I, no argument. Oh, you're right. There's okay, no fine. argument. Yeah. And Costco, Costco bargain hunters are going to have to pay an additional five to ten bucks every year as the popular warehouse chain prepares to raise its membership fees for the first time in seven years. The Washington-based company disclosed the forthcoming eight percent increase in the fee to gain entry into its more than seven hundred warehouses in the USA and Canada as part of a monthly sales report Wednesday. The new fees take effect September first. That means your Costco basic Gold Star membership goes from sixty to sixty. Five bucks annually. The cost of a premium will go from one hundred twenty to one hundred thirty dollars. What do you With get for that? The membership. Well, you, you get to go in and buy. That's stuff. it. You get you get yeah. to go in. Yeah, but it's you get the deal. Charge. So if you yeah. get the super membership, do you get a better door or what? No, they pick you up actually. Okay, thank you. Limo. Yeah. With infl- inflationary pressures squeezing household budgets. The opinions Costco's of Kenny commi- Olson do not reflect those of Costco, by the way. <laughs> Costco's commitment to offering low prices on a wide range of food and other merchandise has helped make its warehouse even more popular lately. That phenomenon in return has helped boost its profits. Uh, they apparently, uh, their shares have doubled in the last 18 months, increasing the company's market value by about 180 billion dollars during that span uh the uh five-week period ending july 7th the company made 24.5 billion dollars in a five-week period so a lot of john that fee you talked about is that a monthly no annual annual Annual. well i had serious question there's two levels of of joining yes well what's the difference well, there's different. You get different perks. I, you know what? Let's take a break. I'll look them up and get back to you. How's Thank you. Sound? I want to no. know. He wants the he wants the Boxster level, and I want the F one fifty level. Yeah, that's, let's that's, let's that's look at it that way. Right yeah, all right. Yeah. Are you a yeah. member of what the Hoffman <laughs> Water Club? I am. You should be too. In fact, I was uh, on my way to the station this morning, and I saw a Hoffman Water vehicle in the great city of Jordan, Minnesota. So I'm going to take credit for that. Thank you to that person that Hoffman Water uh, had Hoffman Water come out for that free water analysis. I appreciate you supporting Hoffman Water that supports the Garage Logic podcast. I guarantee that person made the phone call to 612-895-2440, or they might have visited the website, which is HoffmanWater.com. Listen, I've been a customer of Hoffman Water and Kinetico for years. In two different homes, I've had the Kinetico system installed, and it's made an amazing difference in the quality of my water. And it doesn't matter what you're in the market for. Maybe it's a water softener, an iron rust or order filtration system, or a brand new drinking water system. They offer sales, service, and rental options for all of those systems, and they're going to do a great job for you like they've done for me for a number of years. Listen, you get that system installed, your showers are better, so is your laundry, so is your drinking water, so is your cooking, your ice, everything is better with Hofferman Water and Connecticut. First step is get on that schedule, 612 612- 895-2440 or visit HoffermanWater.com. Hofferman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. Please do me a favor and mention that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. The earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. 
Before uh, we get to the uh, rest of the news, uh, Joe, as I promised, the difference between the executive and Gold Star membership yeah. at Costco. Yeah. Uh, the executive, which you pay uh, $120 right now, although it's going up to $130, uh, the two big things that you get that you don't get with the regular one, uh, they have a lot of, I don't know if you go to Costco a lot, Joe, but they have a lot of different services. They I was supply, there once. Like you can, you can, get, you can get discounts on new cars, uh, insurance. For instance, my insurance uh, goes through uh, Costco, although it's not with Costco, but my car and house insurance, you get discounts on that. And different. there's various services, travel services, et cetera. And if you're an executive member on your purchases, you get an annual 2% reward. So if you spend, I don't know, $3,000, uh, that would be... 60 bucks, right? Is that is that right? Am I doing the math sure, here? Sure. So you get that money back at the end of, if you oh, spend, you check. Now, yeah, and a lot of go. people spend much more than that, obviously. What, I have a number of questions. What do you get if you have the trailer park membership, the cheap one? <laughs> they let you in. Yeah, they right? actually they, don't. That's, no, 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 but the, the lower level, that's isn't that basically it? Yeah, you, the lower you, level yeah. you get in, and yeah. you, you still get a lot of the perks on some of the services, but not as big a perk as you would Just if you were. Just for instance, um, and it's not like I know the price of a dozen eggs, but what would the difference be from a supermarket or, say, Walmart to Costco for a dozen eggs? Or is it significant? Is it two bucks? Well, it's I wouldn't it go to Costco cents? to buy eggs because everything you I buy I don't at want Costco's. your opinion. Just give me an example. Anything. Well, I know I'm saying you don't walk into Costco usually and buy eggs. You go there to buy you, bulk. I, I, yeah, you buy, uh, uh, like, for instance, they have the good toilet paper and the good paper towels, and they're cheap. Uh, they got the good uh, paper, which is, which is oh, cheap. They got and the good, one more uh, question. And this. They and one delving. more question. Yeah, if a relative or family member works there, what's the discount? There is no discount. You what? do. I'm aware, though, you get a free executive membership. So you don't Joe, have to pay. I think what exactly. John's trying to say here is he likes going to a place where you can buy a five gallon bucket of soap, a pair of jeans, and some steak. And eight hundred rolls of toilet paper. Or as, exactly. or as Joe used Joe used to say, I can go buy tomatoes and tires. Yep. So. <laughs> go in there, you can make a salad and then you can get some tires. <laughs> now you're talking fleet farm, right? I don't know. No. <laughs> In uh, the rest of the news now, President Biden will be holding a news conference today, the key event in a week during which the Democratic incumbent is trying to fend off calls for him to step aside as the party's presumptive nominee uh, following a shaky debate performance. It uh, is scheduled to start at 5.30 hour time. It's with the White House pes uh, press corps. It had initially been slated for 4.30 hour time, but the White House moved the time back an hour later. Uh, Biden has not held very many news conferences that aren't tied to a foreign leader's visit or trip abroad. And typically those are just as what's known in the business as a two plus two, meaning Two reporters from the U.S. and two foreign reporters get to ask a question. Biden returns to the campaign trail with the trip to Michigan Friday. He'll also do an interview with NBC on Monday. Uh, this press conference, uh, widely seen, uh, is something that might determine whether or not Democrats want to keep him as their presidential nominee. It's being referred to as a big boy press conference. Is that uh, an affectation of the press or are his people calling it that? I, An embattled know. President Biden is set to stage a big boy press conference Thursday afternoon, by which I believe they mean no teleprompter and no script. Or maybe it's big boy from Outcast. He's this is the him. New York Post version of this story. Maybe he has big boy underpants on and not diapers. <laughs> well, I know perfectly well what it means. My question is... Oh, it's uh, funny. it's John Claude Kelly has repeatedly referred to it as a big boy press conference. How condescending are these people? How disingenuous. They're at, they want to, they, they're sending this guy out solo. He's, he's walking the tightrope tonight because he doesn't have a script or uh, a teleprompter, although that's hard to believe they can't figure out a way to fix that for him. And they're calling it a big boy press conference. This is the president of the United States. <laughs> what? Hold on, hold You're on, acting hold like on. you... Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the... Why are you now acting like you, didn't, you haven't known this for four years? 
Because, Kenny, it's become so terribly evident to everyone. And and uh, I just find it incredible that they're, they're, they're so childish about this that they call it a big boy press but he conference. did such a great job. He knew all the facts. Joe, you knew all um, the answers. There's an, like to Hagen does. there is an account that I follow, gentlemen, that, that puts you know numbers into perspective. It, it's not just about political numbers, but this one is. Listen to this, Joe. Okay. If you spend, this is talking about the Biden administration's spending in his tenure. If you spend $1 million every single day, it will take you 2,740 years to reach $1 trillion. Wow. Hold on. But wait, there's more. The U.S. national <laughs> debt is now $35 trillion and rising by $1 trillion every 100 days. 100 days. Nobody seems to care about that. But he did such a great job. He knew all the facts. That's it's, a lot you of know, money. That's a lot I, of money. I, I hate to get involved in this, but... No, you don't. The, you don't hate. It, well, it, it <laughs> the debt actually went up more under Trump, remember? Seven trillion immediately. <laughs> but what is it now? And it's, it's four, 30, it's it's four billion under it's, under Biden. It's four billion that's been added. Four billion to the deficit. Four trillion. I'm sorry. Four trillion. Yeah. Seven trillion under Trump and four trillion. Are you sure about Biden. that? Well, then how come the uh, what's the debt right. then? Thirty two trillion. Thirty five. Thirty thirty five. I think. 35 where did trillion. the rest of it come from? I'm going to see. Well, it was when Trump came in. It was already at twenty whatever. National twenty debt time. Twenty five. I'm on it. I'm on it, John. If you want to. Chris has got it. Okay. Uh, other news: The thirty two members of NATO on Wednesday formally declared Ukraine on an irreversible path to membership in the military alliance, offering a binding assurance of protection once its war with Russia ends. NATO members countries individually and in Wednesday's joint statement from their summit in Washington announced a series of steps aimed at bolstering Ukraine's defenses. That includes the U.S., the Netherlands and Denmark announcing the first NATO provided F-16s would be in the hands of Ukrainian military pilots by this summer. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky tweeted his appreciation of the effort by NATO to strengthen his air force coming soon after Ukraine saw one of the deadliest strikes of the war. Well, here's what I'd do. Here I'd let NATO in right now. Then all NATO members bomb the, uh, Russia off the face of the earth. <laughs> that might cause end some of story. problems. That might cause... No, no, no. Just end it. Okay. Joe's plan. World War, World War Three, maybe? Right. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be a World War Three. You just take them. They won't exist anymore. Yeah, but didn't World he line himself? With, China did. Yeah, then was... bomb them off the face of the oh, earth, yeah, too. That, that'd go over well. <laughs> you sound a lot like Trump. Yeah. I no, he would fingers. never bomb his buddy Putin. Ooh, good one, Joe. Oh my God. <laughs> I like that. Um, I'm trying okay. to yell or something. I, yeah, I, I have the figures here. <laughs> yes, sir. When Trump yes, sir. took office, yes. the U.S. debt was $20 trillion. Okay. When he left office, it was 26.9. So, as John mentioned, not quite, but about six and a half. Trillion. So what's old Ice Cream Joe added to Ice it? Cream Joe Ice Cream is now Joe. at 35, which is about 8. So he added 8. Trillion. Big deal. Okay. So pretty much even with Trump. Yeah, they both have squandered <laughs> the money. Well, it's a little bit more, but it's... Yeah, trillion. Okay. <laughs> is any individual in the world getting close to being worth a trillion? Or is that still... Oh, yeah. got to be, right? Well, I don't think so. But when do you think who's the richest man how, in the world? What's a trillion dollars? A lot of money. How many? How many billion is a trillion? A hundred. Wouldn't it be a hundred? You, you don't know. Do yes, you? it is. It's a hundred. Isn't it a hundred billion? Well, then Bezos is a trillionaire. That doesn't make sense. Right, it's it's a more thousand, than a hundred billion. Thousand, it's a thousand. Might billion. be a thousand billion. Right. Is a trillion. <laughs> we, by the way, had we, we eclipsed five trillion in nineteen ninety six. Thirty-four point sixty-three trillion. Thirty. I could end the deficit nope. in five minutes. Just pass a law that says anytime there's a deficit of more than three percent of GDP, all sitting members of Congress are ineligible for re-election. Who said that? Warren Buffett. Very good. 
Was it Warren Buffett? It was. Yeah. It's a yeah. wonderful idea. It really is. Yeah, it would get them worked. focused on what they're supposed to be focused but, yeah, on. But then they're that, voting to end their careers, so yeah. they're not going to do that. But you then know, there's, there's, like term limits. there's a guy that doesn't want to bother himself with politics. He's too busy being successful. <laughs> oh, my God. Is he ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Fortune magazine says no billionaires within striking distance of becoming a trillionaire, and uh, it uh, varies between 200 and Two hundred twenty billion dollars. Whoever happens to be richest that that month. So mm-hmm. a long ways to go, obviously. Two hundred and sixty. Right. John, thank you. Uh, oh sure. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Didn't get much news get in here. That's pal. fine. We're closed. Bar's I'll save some of that for the, I'll save some of that for tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You're cut off. <laughs> I thought it was over. Yeah. Well, apparently it is. Call a cab, pal. <laughs> You're out of here. I got, I got one story in. All right. Thanks for the four hours of show prep this morning. Yeah, pal. I know. I'm <laughs> glad I got up at 7.30 well, John, no, to no, I, I, uh, hey. I, miss, I misspoke. Hey. Uh, what else do we need to know? That's that's fine, Joe. Just right. move along. Move along. Hit your thing. To see. Okay. Hit your thing, will you? I tried to. Time to play Love at a Hardware Store. <laughs> what do you got, it John? It's uh, late breaking news just in. The owner of the largest candy store in Minnesota says he's not moving the store. That's the Jordan Candy no. Store. It was, yeah, it was supposed to move, but apparently there's a problem with the location. The owner's saying it's not viable for a new build, so the store will remain. At its current Well, thank location. God you've been making us drive through one lane traffic at 169. You. <laughs> Why was he going to move? Well, the the space they're at, and I'm not I'm not ripping the guy. The the space they're at, they could the, the parking lot could be twice the size and it would be packed. Yeah. Is it true <sighs> that they have every single soda pop known to man there? Kenny, you need to make a trip down. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fantastic. Just for the pop, I, I don't yeah. need it's, any of the candy, but I. It's a fun walk through, Kenny. All really the is. all the candy, all the I pop. I want orange just, pop. Yeah. I want grape pop. I want a hot oh, dog. Yeah. I want a hamburger. They got Moon want, River. You'll get nothing. No at Green River. Like it. Thank green you. River. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Renewal by Anderson brings you beer, only Kenny. because. Rut beer. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Because only because they come to us all the way from the traveling Lymans in Eden Prairie. Minnesota was so quiet on this day. How quiet, How was, quiet it? was it? There's only one day in history on this day. Oh. Eight, on this day. Joe, today is already July 11th. I know. Isn't that something? She's flying by. The world is flying by. On this day, 7-Eleven. In 1999, Duluth, Duluth State Representative <laughs> Willard Munger died. Oh, and I remember we had we were amused by his name, weren't we? Uh, we have been. I wasn't on the show. Well, I mean, what, Bert has even used uh, the name Willard yeah. and, or Munger or something. Uh-huh. He had served over 40 years in the Minnesota House and was known as an advocate for environmental protection. Mm. Huh. Uh, isn't there a bridge in Duluth now, the Munger? Uh, and a trail. The Munger, the Willard Munger Trail. But what a great name, huh? Willard Munger. I believe- Sounds like a baseball player. Oh, yeah. Wasn't his tagline when he was running for re-election, Munger only pawn in game of life? No, that that guy's name wasn't Munger. No. It oh. was no more Mongo. hunger with Munger. Oh, it I was see. Mongo. Gotcha. And, and Munger with hunger, hunger, hunger. So I never mind. Willard Munger, God Sorry. rest his soul. Yes. Thank yes. you, G. Ellers. Okay. Thank you. Um, G. Ellers, please do us a favor as I pull out the official ad copy and promo book. Hit up the old GL YouTube channel because on that channel we are providing daily content for your amusement. If you can't get enough of GL, all you got to do, just hit that thing. And uh, we have behind the scenes content, full segments of video shorts. That's Garage Logic Podcast on YouTube. I'd hit that. Well, yeah. It's a big fatty on that subscription. Um, Also, don't forget to sign up for the Daily Logician. It's the best and easiest way to stay up to date on Garage Logic. The email is sent right to your inbox, the latest news and notes from the show, including the most recent up to date podcast.
It is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic, and now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and he is there for you for that free, yes, I use the word free, 48-minute financial consultation with absolutely zero obligation. And he will always give you the straight talk. He will never give you the sugar-coated advice. And he is on the line with us once again here in Garage Logic. And Josh, a simple question for you to begin today. Is inflation under control? No. <laughs> no, inflation is not under control. Inflation, Chris, is down, not under control. Prices are still going up in certain parts of the economy. And as I said from the start of the Fed's raising interest rates to deal with inflation, it's about all. That's all. O-I-L. And we could also add to that oil derivatives like gasoline. If there was more all available and it was drill, baby, drill, the likelihood of inflation and particularly runaway inflation, I think would have been, I can't say runaway inflation, because we didn't have runaway inflation. Inflation did go sky high a few years ago. But part of that was people coming back to work after the government mandated shutdown or slash government mandated recession through the COVID, people were starting to spend. There was not a lot of product available that pushed prices up. Pretty simple. Demand is up. Supply is down. Prices are going to to rise to meet that. Very simple. On top of that, people were back driving. There was not enough oil available. Government uh, policy said, nope, we don't want, we don't want to be drilling for oil. We don't want natural gas. We want wind and solar. Guess what again happened? happens. Not enough supply to meet demand. Prices go up. That's still a part of inflation. On top of that, you had big demand for housing. And again, not enough supply. Housing prices go up and housing prices, monthly mortgage equivalent rents were on the rise and shelter costs make up a third of the CPI index. Now, right now, those prices have been leveling off. Food prices are still up, but gasoline prices are down. Used car prices are down, and that has brought down the inflation number. But there are still plenty of costs that are rising, such as insurance, both homeowners, auto insurance, medical insurance. That's still going to be taking a bite out of people's incomes. Invest, investment professionals and the talking heads just look at the headline number. The headline number down, that does give them confidence that the Fed will start cutting rates in September, particularly after some of the dovish talk coming from Jay Powell yesterday in front of Congress, where he did pose that he is concerned that if the Fed keeps their tightening policy too tight for too long, the economy could go into a stall. I'm still of the opinion that the Fed is not going to cut this year unless, of course, they meet their inflation target of 2%. We're still a ways away from that because the inflation number is still overall is just below 3% down at the 2% target. And if the Fed does cut ahead of the election, let's say September, that could be a boost for the incumbent party over the challenger. And the Fed does not want to appear political. Don't get your hopes up right now of interest rate cuts. But the hope of interest rate cuts and declining inflation did push laggard stocks up and leading stocks down. So right now, NASDAQ, which had been up significantly this week and last week, the NASDAQ is down 315 points as we speak. The S&P is down 46 points. That is primarily from the market leaders, favorites Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA. Nvidia, Microsoft, Meta, Google uh, are all down big numbers, losing just about everything they've made this week. When it comes to Apple, am I complaining that Apple is trading at $227 a share? Yeah, feel sorry for me because yesterday it was $232 a share. Yeah, I'm sorry about that.
that, but Apple is still up in the last month from $190 a share. Apple's new products are going to still be in high demand as we come into the new product season in just a month and a half. Amazon stock is down, has been flirting with $200 a share, but can't get over that number as Jeff Bezos, I think, is still selling number one. And number two, it has been a market leader. Amazon did have, we'll say, a little conference yesterday focusing on Amazon Web Services. Many analysts came from that saying, you know, Amazon could be one of the best for implementing artificial intelligence. I'll stick with both Apple and Amazon when it comes to artificial intelligence. But the market leaders pulling back right now do give you an opportunity to add to positions on this pullback. And I would not add add full on because we still have some volatility coming out as earnings season starts in earnest tomorrow. Excellent advice, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now is the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. Just make sure, Chris, you listen to my friend, our former friend, Kinky Friedman yes. and the Texas Chew Boys. And just remember, put your, and or maybe I should say, just remember to tell your wife, get your biscuits in the oven and your buns <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.